بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله continuing on in our study of the brief treaties obstacles that prevent one from making repentance so these are things which prevent us from coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those obstacles which prevent us from making tawbah those things which stand in our way the brother mentioned in his introduction of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah's treaties because this is from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and the brother, the translator who is the brother Talib bin Tyson and he mentioned in his uh, introduction, he said, Sins are a substantial obstacle hindering the way to the attainment of success. Sheikh Ben Uthaymin says, Some matters that protect a person from sins and help him to remain distance from them and not to fall in them are knowledge of their dangers, what they give rise to, their evil consequences, and extreme harms. So Ben Othamin mentioned three things with regards to uh, things that protect a person from sinfulness. He said first is knowledge, knowledge of the danger of those sins. So knowing if something is one of the major sins or minor sins, this can help you avoid it and what its punishments are and so forth. Uh, the next thing, what they give rise to, what these sins they lead to, and what is the result of these sins. And the third thing, he said, their evil consequences and extreme harms. The harms of those sins, how it affects us in the dunya and as a society, in this worldly life, and how it affects you as an individual who does those sins in the hereafter. Ibn Rajab said, uh, regarding repentance, that if a person repents to Allah and truly meets the conditions of repentance, then Allah will definitely accept that repentance from him in the same way he accepts a disbeliever embracing Islam. This is the opinion of the majority of scholars and Ibn, uh, Ibn Abdul Bar even uh, gives some indication that this is a consensus. Ibn Al-Qayyim said regarding sins, alienation between the slave and his Lord, lack of remembrance of Allah, corruption of the heart, Depri uh, deprivation of knowledge, squandering one's time, anxiety and sorrow, constriction of the chest, hardship of life and gloominess of circumstance, hardness of the heart, lack of correction of opinion, concealment of the truth are a result of sins, disobedience. So that, that's a powerful statement by Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum, rahimahullah ta'ala. And he said, that regarding sins, that this is alienation between the slave and his Lord. So this alienates you in a sense from your, from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're setting up almost like a hijab between you and Allah the more you sin. And we already know, as the Prophet Sallallahu indicated, that sinfulness, it clouds the heart and it begins to cover the heart. And Allah mentions, Rana ala qulubihim bima kanu yaksibun. Uh, that they receive uh, a covering over their hearts for what they used to do. All those, the sinfulness, it creates, as the Prophet Sallallahu explained, and it was mentioned in regards to this verse, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he mentioned that the sinfulness, it starts out as a black dot on the heart. And the more you sin, the more that dot spreads. So it's like a cancer in a sense, covering and covering your heart until it becomes sealed. And anyone who engages in sinfulness, they can attest to this, that when you're involved in sinfulness, when you're involved in certain sins, whatever, regardless, maybe you listen to a lot of music, maybe you listen, you find that your heart becomes harder and harder and it becomes more difficult to leave that sin as well as your heart becomes more immune to other sinfulness. And so that shows us the danger of that ran ala qulubi, qulubina, that, that, that covering over the heart. And that sinfulness leads to that. It covers, to, covers the heart. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that the heart in uh, uh, authentic hadith, he said, uh, fi jizid mudghatin. We in the salaha, ida salaha, salaha jizid akullu, we the fasida fasida jizid akullu, ala wahiya qalb. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Verily, in the body is a morsel of flesh. And if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. 
If it becomes uh, sick, then the whole body becomes sick. Verily, it's the heart letting us know. And in Arabic, the term qalb, uh, qalb is one of the names for the heart in Arabic. And they say it is called qalb because qalb, qalba, yuqallibu, means to turn. It means something that's turning or changing, quick changing or, or turning. And so the heart is always what? It's always between changing and, and going through changes and always, sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad. Sometimes you're doing good, sometimes you're doing bad. Sometimes your iman is high, sometimes your iman is low. So the heart is always changing. And we hope, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a class with the bat. Ibn al-Qayyim also mentioned some other fawaid. And, and, and also regard, regarding this, I want to mention, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr. That ma'asi, or sinfulness, is a means to disbelief. Not meaning that the person who sins, or even the person who's repetitive in sin, they're not a disbeliever, no. But it means that this is the means, it's a wasail. Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr. It's a means to disbelief. That the more sinfulness you go, and, and anyone who has been involved in a lot of sin, they can attest to this. That sometimes they become so engrossed in sin. I'm not talking about falling into a sin here and there. I'm talking about someone who's, who regularly does certain sins. Their hearts become so hard that they almost begin to wonder and justify their sin. And this is the danger of the covering of the heart. It's the danger of sinfulness. And it illustrates how that sinfulness can lead to disbelief because a person who drinks alcohol, for example, or they smoke weed all the time. I'm not saying one who fell into it one time. I'm talking about someone who does this sin repetitively. They begin to question, well, I wonder, is it really haram? Because, you know, I'm not hurting anyone else. I'm just getting high. I'm only smoking it in my room. I'm only doing it in my car. I only do it on my job or, you know, whatever the situation is. The point is, is that they begin because they do it so much, the sin becomes less uh, uh, threatening to them, you know, the threat, the threat of punishment, that they begin to almost embrace the sin. And so this is a great danger that we have to be careful. Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr. Kama qala Shaykh al-Islam. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. Ibn al-Qayyum, uh, we mentioned some of those fuayah that Ibn al-Qayyum mentioned. And then the brother mentioned, Mujahid said, everyone who disobeys his Lord is an ignorant person until he comes away from that sin. So he's saying that that's a part of ignorance. And, and why? Why? Let's understand this ether. Why is that a part of ignorance? Because the person who commits a sin, or, you know, an intentional sin, they know that Allah sees them. They're not ignorant of that. They know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al kulishayn qadir, that he is over all, all things omnipotent. That Allah sees everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and hears everything. Nothing. There's nothing that is hidden from Allah in this life or in the, in the heavens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. He knows everything. He sees everything. He hears everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person is ignorant. It shows that they don't really know and understand that. If you, we all know. I, I'm saying this now, and I know this, and you know this. But is that going to stop us from the, the sins that we do, especially for major sins that we might fall into? When we know Allah sees us. We know Allah sees us, sees us but we still do it. So that shows that that's not true ilm. True ilm is when you're practicing that, and you really, really believe that. And what, to where you act upon it, it prevents you from doing sin. If you know Allah, you wouldn't do many sins in front of the people. You would not drink alcohol in front of your fellow brothers and sisters if that's something you're tested with. Or smoke weed or crack or whatever the situation is. Or you would not look or, uh, you know, if you're a man, look at that, that, that woman. Or you wouldn't. Uh, try to pursue zina. If you knew your brothers from the masjid saw you, you would feel shame in front of the people in the marketplace. You would feel shame. But you know that Allah for sure sees you. As the Prophet said in the hadith uh, of the hadith of Jibreel, 
alayhi salatu wasalam, when asked about, uh, uh, when asked about ihsan, the Prophet sallallahu responded by saying, إِن تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ يُكُنْ فَإِن لَمْ تُكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاك. It's to worship Allah as if you see Him, and because you can't see Him, know that He sees you. That is إحسان. That's another level of إيمان. That's إحسان. Those are the محسنون that they actually they know that Allah sees them and they worship Allah subhanahu wa taala with that fear and they avoid sinfulness. For the sake of Allah Tabarak wa Taala, that's ihsan, and that's a high level uh, of that the the, the mu'min can reach. And may Allah bless us with that. I mean, uh, and so then Mujahid uh, after that, uh, so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as well as he taught us how to pray and he taught us how to fast as well as and how to perform Hajj as well as Umrah and and others other things has also taught us how to get closer to our Lord. One of these ways was through repentance. We, mo we, most, uh, we must learn not only to follow the Prophet ﷺ in ritual acts of worship, but also in spiritual acts of worship, which consists of one purifying one's soul. We must learn to put into practice the whole conduct of the Prophet's life وسلم, and not just in acts of worship or, or other... Uh, you know, just an aqidah or something. But it's it's totally, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is every, it's all of those things. The, it's the Prophet's uh, aqidah, what he taught us from creed, what to believe. It's his manners. It's his methodology in dawah, you know, his minhaj. It's his, his ibadat and his mu'amalat. It's his actions of worship and his interactions with others. All of that makes up the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and all of that we must strive our best uh, to, to learn and come closer. And that is most of the introduction of the Brothers' Treaties and we'll start to get into the treaties of Shaykh Rasnab ibn Taymiyyah in the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Muhammad.